Rumoi, a town of some 30,000 on the west coast of the island of Hokkaido. To Rumoi and their nearby camp come members of the ground self-defense forces for their annual ski drill. Ski troops are another of those units which, like paratroops, seem to constitute a special fraternity within whatever military organization they are a part. Such training develops a strong feeling of pride among the men, nor is their pride wholly unjustified. Mountain terrain, which is the usual destination of the ski trooper, is rugged going under the best of conditions. In snow and cold, weighted down by heavy military equipment, only the strong and agile can hope to long survive, let alone fight an armed engagement. The winter maneuvers on which the men are now embarking will last four days and cover intensively every phase of military skiing. Even simple skiing on the level can be a challenging task, as neophyte skiers are constantly discovering. The same sliding action of the ski which enables an expert to travel at great speed makes it hard for the beginner to move at all. Add to the basic problems of skiing the weight of, say, a machine gun, and you have the reason why even an average military skier must be something of an expert. The herringbone, which every skier recognizes as the fastest method for climbing a hill on skis, and also the most exhausting. The name of this technique is derived from the peculiar herringbone pattern formed by the skis on the snow. From the crest of the hill, a mortar squad will make a straight downhill run and set up its weapons. With snow, part of the problem is digging down to a firm, steady surface for mounting your weapon. The mortar is a weapon known universally as the infantryman's personal artillery piece. Unlike heavier artillery, the mortar goes wherever the infantryman goes, becomes almost as familiar and as essential to him as his own rifle. The heavy machine gun squad repeats the same maneuver, a straight downhill run on skis, followed by rapid emplacement of their weapon. It's harder than it looks. Infantry on skis. Their mission is what an infantryman's mission has always been to engage the enemy at close quarters and capture or destroy him. But fighting on skis requires certain specialized skills, tricks of the trade which even an expert skier must learn. How many skiers, for instance, can handle their ski poles and a heavy caliber rifle at the same time? The Japanese Ground Self-Defense Force is not a large organization, but it is a well-trained one 
ready to serve as the nucleus for a first-class military unit should the need ever arise. These men are receiving the best instruction the Japanese and United States governments jointly can provide. Here is General Ned D. Moore, Chief of the Army Section of the United States Military Assistance Advisory Group. Selected Japanese officers undergo formal training in service schools in the United States. These students return to serve as instructors in their own service schools. Further, many ground self-defense force personnel receive training with U.S. forces in Japan. Although still receiving U.S. military equipment and aided as necessary by the Military Assistance Advisory Group, the ground self-defense force is becoming more and more self-sufficient. From an obscure start in 1950, the police reserve has been transformed gradually into a more mature military organization. The ground self-defense force is a different army from that which paraded through Japanese streets in the days of the old imperial power. An integral part of a new and democratic Japan. It is an army whose first duty is defending the newfound freedom of the ordinary Japanese citizen. As someone once remarked, the Japanese soldier can march, he can shoot, and he learns fast. The Japanese also have great industrial capacity and scientific know-how. They are a valuable friend in the Pacific. Now this is Sergeant Stuart Queen, inviting you to be with us again next week for another look at the big picture. The big picture is a weekly television report to the nation on the activities of the Army at home and overseas. Produced by the Signal Corps Pictorial Center. Presented by the United States Army in cooperation with this station you too can be an important part of the big picture. You can proudly serve with the best equipped, the best trained, the best fighting team in the world today, the United States Army.